Greetings. Today we're going to explore the effects of exponential growth on finite, non-renewable resources. There is an old Persian legend about a clever merchant who presented a beautiful chessboard to his king and requested that the king give him in return one grain of rice for the first square, two for the second square, four grains for the third, and so forth. The king readily agreed and ordered rice to be brought from his stores. The fourth square of the chessboard required eight grains, the tenth 512 grains, this, the fifteenth square required 16,384, and the twenty-first square gave the merchant more than a million grains of rice. By the fortieth square, a billion grains of rice had to be brought from the storeroom. The king's entire rice supply was exhausted before he reached the sixty-fourth square. The king had the problem solved by putting the greedy merchant to death. Scientists have observed two types of growth of populations in nature. Some populations grow by what's called arithmetic growth, which is steady growth over a course of time. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 would be an arithmetic progression. Other populations grow exponentially, that is, by doubling. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Let's look at what this means on a spreadsheet. Let's look at arithmetic growth on a spreadsheet. This is Excel spread, spreadsheet here. And here we have the period. Column A here is the period and here we have at the top we have the rate of growth so for each period in column B the rate of growth is going to be 0.5 so in series 1 we go 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3 another example of arithmetic growth is here's our same periods but we have a growth rate of 1 per period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so forth. Here, our third scenario, we have a period, and over here we have that period growing by 1.5. So 1, 2.5, 5.5. Finally, we have a scenario where each period is growing by 2. So what we have here are four different examples of arithmetic growth. And this is what a graph looks like for arithmetic growth. Here we have our 0.5 growth over the course of 39 periods. This goes up the least because it's going up incrementally, 0.5. Here we have our arithmetic growth for 1 the red one, and 1.5 for the green one, and 2 for the purple one. In each case, though, notice that what we have is a straight line. Now let's consider geometric growth. Remember, geometric growth is based on doubling. So in period 1, our number is 1. In period 2, our numbers 2 because 2 is double of 1 as well as 1 plus 1 is well 2 is double of 1 in 3 period 3 2 doubles to 4 period 4 to 8 and 16 and so on and so forth Oops. and this is what our curve looks like by the time we get to 39 This is called a J-shaped curve. This is exponential growth. This is also seen by ecologists in nature. But this is only part of the picture. Anytime ecologists, or anytime in nature, you see a growth pattern like this, 
what you see is it passes some limiting factor food habitat disease and the population overshoots and then crashes and if it doesn't crash to zero it starts again for the first million years of human beings existence we grew via an arithmetic curve as we saw in the spreadsheet somewhere in the late 1700s uh, we started growing in a geometric pattern uh, simultaneously with the Industrial Revolution simultaneously with the use of fossil fuel energy first mechanical energy in the form of steam but uh, that basically fossil fuel energy and since that time we've been growing human population at a j-shaped curve an exponential curve here is a more a closer look at the last uh, few hundred years from 1750 to uh, projected to 2050 and please note that in the first million years of our existence we grew to 1 billion people in the next 130 years we doubled to 2 billion people in the next 55 years uh, uh, sorry uh, 45 uh, years we doubled again to 4 billion people and um, we're on a path to where we're already at 7 billion people in the year 2013 so humans have been growing at a exponential rate since about 1750 now if humans are growing on a exponential rate at an exponential rate and we each need a certain amount of food and water and other resources to survive it makes sense doesn't it that the amount of materials we would need to grow to support ourselves would grow in a parallel fashion to our population growth not only that as we become more civilized as we move from an agrarian to a uh, industrialized society some would say less civilized but uh, we certainly use more resources per person per capita so uh, we certainly can expect that if we look at the curves of how much of any given resource from uh, oil to aluminum that humans use we can expect some sort of curve that's going to follow our population curve a bit more about growth rate and doubling time the higher the percent the growth rate the shorter the doubling time the easiest way to think about this is think about money in a bank account if you have a 0.5% interest rate like you do now it'll take you till the next uh, century and then beyond to double your money if you had a 3.5% rate your uh, doubling time would be about 20 or 21 years let's look at another spreadsheet that I've set up over here we have the growth rate and over here I have this column here here's a hundred so that's the start we got a 10 percent growth rate here so in the first year it grows to 110 next year 121 133 it's growing by 10 percent and see this falls here at 10 percent where it turns true the ninth year is the doubling time see 200 what I have this program to do is I said if this is twice this then say true it gives me the doubling time so now I can change this so anyway the doubling time 10 percent 
equals nine years. This is percent and this is years. So now let's say if I change it to 1%, instead of 1.1, I'm going to multiply by 1.01. 71 years, this is 10%, this is 1%. 71 years. Uh, and 3.5% was 21 years, and 5% is 15 years, and 10% is 8 years. I have 9 over here, but pretty close. So you get the idea. Okay, next we're going to talk about geometric growth and consumption of a finite resource. What does that mean? Well, all of our resources all of our mineral resources, aluminum, molybdenum, all of our metals, all of our energy sources, oil, gas, coal, all of them are finite resources. They're not being renewed. There's a certain amount of aluminum in the crust of the earth, and that's all we have, aside from what might fall here from um, outer space. So that's a limited resource. But we've got an exponentially growing population, meaning we're demanding more and more aluminum or oil every year. What happens when we do that? We're going to look at that. We're going to look at a model of that now. And we're going to once again use our spreadsheet And let's start here. We're going to call our finite resource widgetum. This is important to human existence. I'm just making this up, but, but this will explain what I'm talking about. Suppose we have this element widgetum. It could be oil, it could be aluminum, whatever. It doesn't matter. And let's suppose that we have 50,000 tons of aluminum, of widgetum left. And we use 100 tons a year. That would mean after one year we would have 49,900 tons left. If we divide 100 into 50,000, that means we would have a static reserve. We would have enough left for 500 years if we only use 100 tons a year. But we're a growing population, and we've got an economy that's healthy when it's growing, meaning it's always using more materials. So we're demanding this, not too fast a rate, but let's say that we're demanding it on average at 3.5% more each year than the year before. I've set that in this spreadsheet up here to 1.035. So now, if you look over here, this 100 in the first year becomes 103.5. That's this 3.5% increase. So now we do the math again. We got 49.9 over here, so we transfer it over here. We subtract 103.50. We come up with 49.796.50. Okay, we do the same number here. We, we divide this number, 103.5, into what we have left, 49,900. And what do we see here? we see that we have a remaining stock of 482 years, not a remaining stock, but a static reserve or the time we have left of this material resource for 482 years. 
So we're going to do this down. We started, we're using 100. So if we come down to the 21st year, which I've put into yellow there, we're, we've doubled the amount we're using now. 3.5% doubling time, about 20, this is 21 years. Okay, so look here. Now we have 47,000 tons and change left. And instead of using 100 a year, we're using about 200 a year. And instead of having 500 years static reserve, when we divide 198.98 into 47,172, we have 237 years apparently remaining. Let's come down and look at the next doubling period. Our next doubling period, we're right here. Actually, I should have picked the line below the yellow. 409, so we've more than doubled. Now, we, instead of 500 years static reserve, we're only in year 42. And we've gone from a 500-year reserve down to a 100-year reserve. By the next doubling period, the third doubling period, we're down to 29,000 when we had 50,000. In other words, in 62 years, we've used up more than half of the resource we had to begin with. And our static reserve now is 36 and a quarter years, meaning somewhere around uh, 98, somewhere around year 100. 62 plus 36 is, um, is 98. We're going to run out of this resource. And here we go. By year 85, our remaining stock is in the negative. Oops, sorry about that. So what appeared at the beginning to be a 500-year supply of a resource at a very moderate rate of 3.5% turns out to be only an 85-year reserve. Now wait. Suppose, for example, that our geologists find more widgetum that we didn't even know it was there. So I'm going to add a zero here. In other words, we found 10 times as much of this material as when we started. And I'm going to skip all in between and just start by saying, initially, it appears we have 5,000 years. We're still at a 3.5% growth rate. And when we come down here, what we find is if we were to find 10 times the amount of the resource, it only extends the life to 151 years. So we've gone from 50,000 and 85 years to 500,000 and 151 years. And as you can see here, if I add a zero to this now, so now instead of 50,000, we have 5 million. That only lasts us to 218 years. So what this means is we start out with um, 50,000 and it gives us an 85 year reserve. We're going to call this an exponential. I've got it spelled here. Ex spelled wrong here, but exponential reserve. That's with exponential growth how, at this rate, how long it would last. Not 500 years, but 85 years. If we find 10 times as much, it lasts 151 years. If we find 100 times as much, it lasts 218 years. Now, please be aware of this argument when you hear people saying, oh, we have lots and lots of uh, natural gas which we can get from fracking. Yes, we're going to increase the supply. 
we're not going to increase it by 10 times. From the model we've just looked at, the previous scenario, we can infer the following things. First of all, we can't count on static reserve as a good measure of how much of a resource we have left. If we have exponential reserve, even a tremendous increase in the availability of a resource has limited effect on that resource's availability to us. We saw that to go from 50,000 to 5 million tons of our imaginary resource widgetum, if we, it was growing at a 3.5% rate, only added from 85 to 218 years. So, the time to consider questions regarding the availability and scarcity of a resource is before when not more than 25% of that resource has been consumed. In conclusion, I'd like you to do the following homework related to this presentation. First, read this article at the link, that's number one. And then do some research on what resources are available to us in reality. We made a model of a fictitious resource. I'd like you to look at a real resource. Actually, I'd like you to look at oil, gas, coal, and two minerals of your choice. And see if you can find out uh, how much of them, what our reserve is, what our known reserve is, and see if you can find out how much are we using each year, and what is the rate of increase, and then maybe you can figure out the exponential reserve at that rate and try that for each of these. You'll have to look at other places but one resource to, to uh, fulfill this is down at the, um, excuse me, the bottom of number two. And finally I'd like to do a mind experiment with you. So just sit back and listen to the following problem. It is not a trick question and I am going to give you all the information you need to answer this question. Here's the question. There's a bacteria that grows by doubling. If you start with one bacteria, which we're going to do, every minute the number of bacteria doubles. So at the end of a minute, there are two bacteria. At the end of two minutes, there are four at the end of, minute, of three minutes, there are eight, and so on and so forth. This bacteria is put into a container, and it's put in at noon, exactly. And at exactly one o'clock, the container is full, and the bacteria die. Okay, at what time was that jar half full? That's the question. That concludes the end of the section on exponential growth and finite resources. Thank you for listening and watching.